By subscribing and liking the content, give us a like to continue delivering the most important information. Stay safe by being vigilant. With that out of the way, let's delve into today's news. Arizona woman accused of funding North Korea's missile program through IT job scheme. In a shocking revelation that intertwines cyber manipulation with international security threats, Christina Marie Chapman, a 49-year-old from Litchfield Park, Arizona, has been indicted for orchestrating a sophisticated scheme that allegedly funneled millions of dollars to North Korea's ballistic missile program. According to federal prosecutors, Chapman was instrumental in securing IT jobs for North Korean citizens at several Fortune 500 companies across the United States, inadvertently aiding a regime widely criticized for its nuclear ambitions. The indictment, unsealed this Thursday, outlines how Chapman and her co-conspirators exploited the identities of over 60 U.S. residents to facilitate employment for North Koreans in sectors critical to the U.S. economy, including technology, media, aerospace, and automotive industries. These jobs not only provided substantial revenue, estimated at $6.8 million, but also potentially granted the North Korean government access to proprietary information, raising grave security concerns. Federal prosecutors detail that Chapman's operation involved intricate identity fraud and sophisticated cyber manipulations. The alleged perpetrators used stolen personal data to create credible profiles for North Korean IT specialists, effectively bypassing employment verification processes. In some instances, Chapman's network added millions of dollars to laundry accounts via manipulated balances, showcasing their technical prowess and the profound vulnerabilities in digital employment and payment systems. This case also highlights a significant lapse in corporate security measures, with over 300 U.S. companies and numerous individuals suffering from the deceit. The entities affected include top-tier firms from Silicon Valley to Wall Street, underscoring the pervasive reach of the scheme. The breach has led to false tax liabilities and compromised personal and corporate data, accentuating the intricate links between identity security and national safety. The investigation gained momentum after Chapman's suspicious activities were reported to the CERT Coordination Center at Carnegie Mellon University, a renowned body that assists in managing security vulnerabilities. Despite Chapman's repeated use of digital platforms to orchestrate these activities, initial attempts to alert authorities and the affected companies met with little to no response signaling a potential oversight in how such threats are evaluated and addressed. Legal experts and cybersecurity professionals are sounding the alarm over the implications of this case, suggesting that it could represent a critical wake-up call for both the private sector and government agencies. The ease with which foreign nationals, potentially under the direction of an adversarial government, infiltrated critical American industries poses questions about the adequacy of current cybersecurity measures, and the need for more stringent employment verification processes. As the legal proceedings against Chapman and her associates advance, the broader discourse on cybersecurity, espionage, and international sanctions is likely to intensify. If convicted, Chapman faces up to 97.5 years in prison, reflecting the severity of the charges and the potential risks her actions pose to national security. This case not only highlights the vulnerabilities inherent in our interconnected digital world, but also serves as a stark reminder of the complex threats that modern enterprises face from both cybercriminals and international adversaries. The unfolding events will undoubtedly prompt a reassessment of security protocols across industries, urging companies to fortify their defenses against an increasingly sophisticated array of cyber threats. For ongoing updates, monitoring trusted cybersecurity news sources like Digital Guard 114 can provide deeper insights into the evolving landscape of cyber threats and defenses. And now, as we reach the end of our news segment, please remember, for a detailed list of our sources, you can find them in the description of our YouTube video. Thank you to everyone who watched today's program. Remember, by following us, you become part of a reliable source for information and advice. Whether you like the program or not, please press subscribe to join our community. This helps us improve and ensures you are among the first to receive our latest news and programs. Don't forget to hit the like button and share our channel with your friends. Farewell, until we meet again.